Hi, I'm Tess Maggio, and I'm the product manager for Delphix's Salesforce compliance solution. In this short video today, I'm going to walk through some details about this offering and then give a demo so you can see it in action. All right, so to set the stage, there's tons of challenges we hear customers face with managing Salesforce data in a compliant way. They're caught with a trade-off between development speed and compliance. That's because application development can expose lots of sensitive data, which needs to be protected to align with stringent privacy compliance laws and from cyber threats. On top of all that, options for masking Salesforce data are manual and error prone, which can lead to expensive mistakes. We wanted to eliminate the need for this trade-off. The solution we built automatically identifies what data are sensitive and mask in a Salesforce sandbox. The speed here is key for DevOps. One of the important pieces that Delphix masking solves for is providing realistic mask data values, which makes it easier to use for test and, um, testing and analysis. We know from working with customers that scrambled data not only becomes no longer useful for dev and analysis, but also really slows down QA efforts. The other piece we solve for is ensuring that Salesforce data retains referential integrity across other data sources used with Delphix. I'm going to spend just a moment more on the idea of referential integrity, since it's really, really important. Some of you might already be familiar with the term, but essentially what it means is that say you have a customer named George Johnson in Salesforce. If we mask his name in Salesforce from George Johnson to Bob Smith, but you're using Delphix for Oracle, then George Johnson will turn to Bob Smith there as well. This facilitates integration testing for applications or for analysis where you rely on multiple data sources. Since Salesforce is that centerpiece of the customer record, it's very common that it'll be a key component in such testing scenarios. And we didn't see a sufficient solution on the market to solve this. Our solution is designed for ease of use and deployment. We offer masking directly in the Salesforce sandbox. This is highly efficient since we're only touching the data that is found to be sensitive and leaving everything else as is. As I'll show in the demo in just a moment, that also means you can get set up to start masking Salesforce really quickly. All right, so one last thing before I get to the demo. Reviewing all of the sensitive data in Salesforce can be an error prone process, especially since Salesforce data is highly complex and Salesforce is quite particular about what can and can't be masked. To give a quick example, there's a common full name field that's read only and is a concatenation of the first name and last name fields. But if you try to mask full name, you're going to get an error because it's read only and can only be updated off of other fields. So that's why we decided to not just pre-discover the sensitive data for the objects and fields in the default Salesforce installation, but also to configure off of what can be masked. We then selected the best masking algorithm for each field. In order to do this, we analyzed the over 300 tables and almost 6,000 fields in that default Salesforce setup. You just then need to run our sensitive data discovery tool on the customizations in your particular Salesforce org. With all of the sensitive data in Salesforce, we wanna ensure the fastest time to compliance and reduce the chance for user error to cause sensitive data to slip through. All right, so what I have up here is a Delphix masking engine in case you hadn't uh, seen this before. So as I had mentioned earlier, a key thing that we're solving for is speed of deployment. My preference is to set things up with CLI. So after I downloaded the offering and set the authentication details to Salesforce, I just ran two commands, one to initialize and one to deploy. That just took me a couple of minutes. And then in the few more minutes that the deploy command was running, it set up this environment. It made the connection to Salesforce, which you'll see here and then also configured what I had mentioned before. So that's those objects and fields with sensitive data and the required masking algorithms. So to use an example, I'll click over here. These are all those, the objects that have sensitive data. So for the contact object, all right. So anything in Salesforce that's a custom field, so this underscore underscore C, so this is just um, all of those all of those fields in this particular object. And if I click over here to masked fields, these are those fields that are found to be sensitive 
in the out of the box installation in the contact object, as well as the algorithms that are our best to mask those. So I will uh, let's give it a try now. So I'm gonna go back to overview to get to the environment, just to save time on the demo. I've already set up the, the masking job. I was just giving it a name and saying which tables I wanted to mask. And again, for demo speed, we're gonna do a really short, uh, short demo. So just on, on these three, uh, these three records. Okay. So for these three records, what I've also done now, and I'm just gonna move this so I can see this better. So I had run a, a query, just shouldn't believe me, you'll see that these values will, uh, will, will stay unchanged. This is what, what we already have here in those records and that matches here. And if I had gone into one of them, you can see those same things I showed in the query. So name, assistant, all of this and assistant phone tracks here. So when I go back here, if I go back to, to contacts, all, so just going back to this contacts, all right, so these are, these are different names. Again, still realistic, um, but you'll see that those names have changed from, from what they were before. So this is previously, this is the, the new masked values. And actually I can just run that query again. So you see all of those values uh, changed again. So assistant name and assistant phone. So all that is to say, that was pretty fast. So if I'm just, if I'm masking tables that are right from the default Salesforce installation, I could have, I could have set way more. I didn't just have to select the contacts table. And that's a pretty fast path to making sure your test data is, is compliant. All right, so one last thing actually. Uh, just before, um, before I close, I wanted to share a great success story from a company that we recently worked with on Salesforce masking. So previously they had manual processes for identifying and masking sensitive information. And this stalled the data refreshes for their Salesforce sandboxes. Those refreshes involved tons of coordination between teams and also manual work. Because of the level of effort to get mass data in the sandboxes, while their data was compliant, it was out of date. That lack of production quality data limited test coverage for Salesforce customizations and slowed down their dev teams. By, by leveraging Delphix compliance automation though now, they can meet SLAs for fresh test data while maintaining security and compliance. And a Salesforce test data refresh is no longer a concerning looming event for them. Thanks so much for your time today and please reach out to learn more or if you have any questions.